two, one, go! We've been modifying two identical Subaru WRXs for the track. One car gets expensive parts, the other car gets cheap parts. We've already installed coilovers and tires, and while it is tempting to keep pushing forward with performance mods, you should never skip on safety. One of the most important pieces of safety equipment that you can put in your car is a racing seat. And that's why I bought this FIA approved Brid racing seat for $1,300. Nice. And I bought this Speed Daddy approved by no one race seat for $175. Bruh. So sketchy, dude. <laughs> you look like you're in a baby seat and someone put a spell on you and you became a grown up. <laughs> we care about Nolan here at Donuts, so we bought him this. FIA approved race quip racing seat for $500. He's gonna be going with this mid option because even though he's really annoying, we don't want him to die. Thanks. Today we're gonna install these seats in our cars and test them for comfort and stability. We'll also be testing some protective racing gear to see if cheaping out on safety really is a bad idea. I'm pretty sure it is. Does more expensive mean more better? Let's find out. Welcome to Donut. Okay, stock seats are pretty good at being comfortable for driving around, but they're not very good at holding you in place on the track. So to demonstrate that, we are gonna be doing what we're calling the dead man test. So James, die. <gasps> oh. oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, squirrel. Oh, another squirrel. Oh, multiple squirrels. <laughs> Oh my god, I think we need better seats. <laughs> well, let's not do that again. <laughs> With our new seats, we have four goals. Goal number one, safety. You want to make sure that you have a reliable, strong seat that will stay intact in case of an accident. And obviously, goal number two, weight savings. Racing seats can be 20 to 30 pounds lighter than your stock seats. A lighter car is usually a faster car. That's why I've been intermittently fasting this whole time. Goal number three, comfort. You don't want your legs going numb or your back getting sore out on the track. And finally, number four, stability. This is the biggest advantage of racing seats, in my opinion, and really the reason that we're doing them. Being securely locked in place and not sliding around like you would in a stock seat allows you to make more precise inputs with your pedals and your steering wheel. Now, regarding the goal of safety, both of these seats are FIA certified. That's the gold standard. Both seats have the little holographic stickers, so we're gonna go ahead and call that a draw. But as for the other three goals, we're gonna have to get our new seats installed to find out. Installing race seats is a pretty simple job you can do with common hand tools. We have this power wrench right here. That's optional. You don't need something like this. The effort to benefit ratio is super high. Once you get some race seats in your car, it's gonna feel like a race car for real. And when you install harnesses along with them, that opens you up to entering a lot more events that require more advanced safety gear. Careful. Passengers. Oh, there are some wires. I gotta disconnect down here. Damn it. How do I undo this? Installing a new seat's a pretty straightforward process. You just basically gotta remove the four bolts holding your stock seat in, disconnect any wiring that connects the seat to the car, and you usually aren't gonna be reusing any of that with your aftermarket seats because they're not gonna be power sliders or anything like that. Then outside of the car, you need to get the seat ready to go in the car by installing the side mounts and or the sliders. Then you gotta drop your new seat assembly into the car and bolt it down. And voila, that's all it takes to install your new racing seat. Now the only other thing you gotta think about is your driver's seat positioning, but we'll talk about that as we install the driver's seat. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Passenger seat officially out. P-S-O-O. -O. Oh my God, those are heavy. 50 pounds per seat. Yikes, a lot of weight. 17.8 pounds for the race quips. Brids weigh 18.4, so heavier than the race quips. So suck it, high team. I mean, overall, we're saving over 50 pounds by switching out our race seats. That's not an insignificant amount, especially when it's mounted low like that. Oh yeah. That's enough for a manufacturer to say it's a limited edition car and charge you more money for it. So, cool. Look at it. Oh. All right, old seats out. Let's put the new one in. No. No, dude. I don't think you understand. All of my money is tied up in AMC. Oh. 
Uh, so while Nolan and James are installing seats and harnesses in high and low car, Justin and I are gonna be testing some other essential track day gear. We've got this super nice Sparco $1,200 helmet for high team. We have this $230 race clip helmet for low team. And then this weird sketchy $70 helmet we found on the internet. Now both these two are Snell and FIA certified. And this is certified stupid. We're gonna test each one of these against each other to see what your money gets you when it comes to helmets. Welcome, center them right there. I haven't been touched like this in years. Now I'm gonna give you a helmet, you're gonna put it on your head, okay? It's not gonna be a hot dog, is it? No, I'm not gonna okay. mess with you. Cause I've seen that TikTok. <laughs> give me a score from one to 10 on how it feels. Oh, it smells like crap. <laughs> Ooh, that smells. It smells funny. I don't like the smell of it. <laughs> Not a lot of padding on the top. I think this would crush and destroy my head. Solid four. Seven. I don't know, like a six? A six. Okay, here we go. Next helmet. Oh, I like the way this feels. I'll tell you that much. This one seems more expensive overall. I give it an 8.3. This is a nine. That's a nine? Great. Nine. Okay, here you go. Last helmet. Ooh, that's light, slick. Last this one. one feels expensive. Oh, I like this one. It felt really good. It felt so good. <laughs> Unfortunately for Low Team, our friends preferred both the expensive and sketchy helmets to theirs. Good thing then that comfort isn't all that matters when it comes to safety gear. Let's see how they fare when we throw them off a roof. One way you can determine the effectiveness of a helmet is to measure the G-forces it experiences during a crash. So I have this little G-force sensor and Justin is down there and he has an app that's associated with this little device. I also have G-force patches. Past 100 Gs, it'll turn this little vial from clear to red. If you experience 60 Gs, that's a concussion. So 100 Gs, that's close to death levels. So hopefully none of our helmets will set this thing off. $1,200 helmet. Three, two, one. Oh! oh my God. Oh my God. All right, you hit right on this little plastic vent here. Oh, there's some cracking. There we go. It's red. You are dead. Unfortunately, Jimmy's neck is really sore from that. So going forward, we're gonna be using this anatomically correct head. $230 helmet. Oh. All three are red. All three of these popped. Let's test our $70 helmet. Whoa! Ooh! That didn't sound good at all. That's really scary. Very scary, Jer. Don't jump off a roof. Dude, we killed our dummy. Meanwhile. Holman. About to suck these nuts. Oh. <laughs> Little harness bar for our harnesses. Ooh, and she's beefy. You tightening? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're installing racing seats, there's a good chance that you're also installing a roll cage that you can mount your harnesses to. But in our case, we're not gonna install a roll cage for a while. So we are using this harness bar to mount our harnesses. It's pretty simple and it usually only requires a few bolts. So simple. Even I could do it. Did I do it? No. Did Zach do it? Yes. Could I do it? Yes. If Zach told me how. So the truth is the harness bar that we got and the harness bar that Low Team got, they're pretty similar. I mean, there's not a huge gap in that market. A harness bar is basically a harness bar. You don't really want to drive around with harnesses. You don't want to get in an accident on the roadway just wearing harnesses and no helmet and anything else. You can uh, get pretty injured. So what we're going to do is try to retain the stock seat belts so we can use them when we're driving the car to the track. And then when it's time to go race, use those harnesses and uh, get the best of both worlds. You wild. So unfortunately, the roof drop test maxed out all of our sensors, so we reconducted the test this time with each helmet, dropping them from a height of six foot. Each helmet performed pretty much just as we expected. Our head inside the $1,200 helmet experienced 18 Gs of force. Inside the $250 helmet, it experienced 25 Gs of force. And then our cheapo $70 helmet, the head experienced 65 Gs of force. That's terrible. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I think what we should do is test the visors for some of these. So Snell will test these with an actual pellet gun to see how good the visors are at being able to deflect debris and stuff. And we have a pellet gun here, so why don't we shoot them? Just hanging around the office. <laughs> 
We have this pellet gun set up six foot away from the visor, cranked it up five pumps. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Lock loaded and choded. Three, two, one. Woo! <laughs> 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 Holy sh Friggin' bounced right back, pancaked the pellet. It didn't go through. I'd say that's a success. Let's try our race quip helmet, shall we? Three, two, one. <laughs> Pretty cool. Another pancaked pellet, but the cheapo helmet. I'm expecting this thing to shatter. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. Ooh, ah, still didn't break through. Oh, dang it, I really wanted it to go through. Me too. All right, let's execution style. <laughs> 20 pumps. Three to one. <laughs> Nothing's ever easy. <laughs> Why can't it just work out? All right, Justin, I'm done messing around. I want to destroy one of these things, so why don't we drive over it with the old GX? What do you say? I say that'll do the job. All right, let's go. Three, two, one. Oh, hell yeah. Ooh, decapitation. Oh, dang. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, man, I'm fine, man. <laughs> Here we go, three, two, one. Oh, cracked it too. But I mean, it didn't fold. It actually bounced out of the way. That's how much structure it had. That's a that's a W, I'd say, if you had got run over with a car. The chances are better, <laughs> at least. Yeah. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. It keeps popping out. I got an oiled up pig at a rodeo. Three, two, one. Oh, there we go. The main head of the helmet? It's totally fine. It flexed and went back. Dude, that's insane. You're definitely dead, but... Um, <laughs> we had to build a special rig just to be able to squish it. I mean, you could have gotten out of the way of that unless you were unconscious. But... No, it's like that scene from Austin Powers. Where he's getting... <laughs> Money wasn't an option. I would for sure pick a helmet like this. You only got one noggin. You don't want to mess that up. No. So if I had to pick between the three, I'd spend the extra dough and I'd get this one. Currently doing my least favorite part of seat install, and that's installing the uh, brackets. Gonna attach them to the seat and everything. I just, I, I hate it. Mm. My thumbs ain't built for this, bro. But it does allow us to dial in the angle of the seat that we want, the angle of the dangle, so the car is as comfortable as can be. That's super important. Important. I personally like to feel super down low in the car. It just makes it feel sportier. I'm gonna set these kind of low, see how they feel, make sure that I can install it, and we'll keep going. Race quip, more like race quit, because you're gonna need to quit the race because you're losing so bad to high team. Whatever, dude. Go pound sand. No. <laughs> now with most racing seats, you have three settings. Your height, your angle, and your position, your distance from the controls, the steering wheel. Now you want the height to allow for good visibility without pulling you too far away from the pedals. And you also want to leave extra room between your head and the car's ceiling because you're going to be wearing a helmet when you're on track. Now you should be mindful of where your harnesses are located because you don't want them loading up against the structure of the seat during a crash. Now the seat's angle should give your legs support without interfering with you depressing the pedals. You need to be able to operate the pedals freely, but you want some leg support. For your forward position, you want to be able to rotate the steering wheel without having to lift your shoulders from the seat. Then we'll throw it in the car, sit in it, see how it feels, and adjust if we need to. A little guess and check. Oh, it's all already scratched and dirty and crap. Yep, scared me. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. It feels good in here to me. Really low in the car, which is what I want. Tons of space. Let's try to back it up. Uh, boy. Jesus Christ. Oh, Oh, my knee. <laughs> See why I hate this so much? It's just adjustment back and forth, little tweaks, getting it right. Takes a while, but it's worth it once you get that driving position to how you want. I come bearing gifts, my friends. What do you got for me, Jerry? I have all sorts of beautiful gifts. Oh, sh oh dude. Feel this. Oh, my God. Dude, feel how light this is. Holy crap. 
they ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into Now, Nolan, this is your stuff. Light and sexy. <laughs> no, Nolan's like, like he was adopted. <laughs> and you guys are getting all the good stuff. Yeah, Nolan got a bad report card. So, <laughs> so Jerry just came in bearing gifts and uh, we got some pretty cool stuff. Now, Nolan on low team got some decent stuff, some race quit stuff. So totally acceptable stuff. Yeah, it's gonna keep him safe out there. Exactly. There is cheaper stuff, but you know, you gotta get at least something that's actually gonna keep you safe. Dude, you look slim as a gym, man. Yeah, I feel like I'm in Slipknot. But we went above and beyond. Got something that's gonna keep you cool. I mean, literally and figuratively. Yeah. We got the sickest race suit, sickest helmets, these gloves. Look at this. This feels so light and like breathable and flexible. It's almost like it's not even on. This definitely feels like it's on. It is definitely fireproof. It's not breathing at all. We'll see how it fits in the car. Well, you definitely won't get lost. <laughs> <laughs> Chest and chain out, feet out. Oh God. You're supposed to be completely naked under this thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> we definitely look like we could be nemesis. Yeah, you nemesis. guys You guys look like the cool rich kids. Don't you just want to hit them in this thing? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. I feel so cool in this suit, I'm gonna start slicking my hair. <laughs> you do look like a professional racing driver. I like that. <laughs> We're officially the boys. Oh, I'm gonna get you guys. <laughs> this ain't Milan, Italy. Fashion show's over. Let's get those seats in these cars. All right, while they do that, I'm gonna go test these things and light them on fire. Let's go. There are a lot of reasons to wear a suit while racing, but one of the biggest ones is to protect you from a fire. Now imagine this, you just crashed your car, and it's engulfed in flames, and you gotta get the heck out of there. So you undo your harness, the door's a little stuck, you finally push it open, you crawl out, and you just spent 10 seconds inside a hot ball of flames. To simulate that, Justin is gonna be taking our flamethrower, he's gonna be a foot away for 10 straight seconds, he's gonna blast us to determine if we can trust this race suit for low team. We place temperature strips underneath the suit here, they're gonna record the maximum temperature reached. Now the bacon here is to simulate skin, but also Justin's is really hungry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before we go ahead and test our race suits, first we need to establish a baseline. So we have our bacon, we have our temperature strips, and we have a return of the boost creep shirt, which you can get at donutmediate.com. Now this will give us an idea of what would it be like if you got in a fiery crash without a race suit on. Justin? All right, let's see our damage. Whoop. <laughs> well, our two temperature strips are completely burned and our bacon is... Almost done. Almost done. That's hot, that's your skin cooked. We don't want that. We've established a baseline here. Now let's go test our $120 race quip suit. Three, two, one, go. Speaking of things you can trust, let me tell you about today's sponsor, eBay Motors, the go-to online marketplace to find the right parts at the right price for whatever you drive. And stop. All right. Whoa. Woo now compared to our baseline donut tee, our race grip suit did pretty good. The bacon, it's much less charred. And unlike our t-shirt, it only maxed out one of our temperature strips. Let's see what $1,700 gets you, Justin. Three, two, one, go. And one more thing about eBay Motors. They have a massive inventory for cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats, ATVs, and more. All right, Justin, stop. And because it's eBay Motors, they're backed by their money back guarantee. You can get the right part or your money back. It's that simple. Well, <laughs> this thing is crispy. crispy. Oh, whoa. whoa, that's cool. Look at that, dude. The bacon here in the middle barely cooked. Barely the, cooked. This didn't even hit peak temp. Right, and this right here uh, didn't didn't get us a, a touch. You had an outer layer, a middle layer, and then an inner layer, all protecting you versus the race quip. Seemed to be just a single just layer one material. Layer, yeah. One thing to note that we're using map gas, so that burns three times hotter than gasoline. So this would be an absolute worst case scenario. For sure, for sure. Right? This, there's no reason in a car this should be in your face. Right, and the fact that it did so good under such harsh conditions means it's pretty impressive i think we have a winner here for sure high team 
Now, whether your budget is high or low, get the right parts at ebaymotors.com or just click the link below. We got the passenger seat basically fully installed. I just adjusted the height, lowered it down a little bit. Feels really good, sliders are working well. Could be done here, except for the fact that we need to install our harnesses. In addition to spending $1,300 per seat on our Brid seats for a total of $2,600, we also spent $520 per six-point harness for these awesome Schroth harnesses. They're six points, they're nice and skinny at two inches, so they're gonna be really comfortable. They're easy to put on, and they look sick but they cost a lot of money. We got some race whip race harnesses right here. These were $160 for each set. They are FIA approved. That's awesome. That's what you want. They're not as swaggy as the straw harnesses, but they'll keep us safe and that's what matters. Also, the font kind of looks like the Lego font and that means a lot to me. So the way you install your harness is really important. You don't want them to be up and you don't want them to be too far down or in a collision you'll get hurt. I've got them kind of mocked up. I got some spots marked. I just need to drill some holes. I felt very thin. Did it work? You know what the burnt carpet smells like? Tell me if you think I'm crazy. You ever had uh, Nutty Buddies, Little Debbies? <laughs> you want these to come across your shoulder and pass through the seat without touching the bottom or the top of the seat belt hole. You want them to hover right through, and as you can see, that's what we've got here. So that's great. I don't have to adjust anything, but the nice thing about these harness bars is that if this were a little too low or a little too high, the harness bar has adjustment up and down, so you can dial that in or out. And these look pretty good. And they feel good. This whole setup feels pretty good. We're reaching that point, folks. Near that point, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. That point. We did it, the seats are in. Both seats fully mounted, both harnesses fully mounted, and the position feels great. <laughs> <laughs> to decide which of our seats are more comfortable, which is very important, we've got five contestants. We're gonna blindfold them, we're gonna bring them in here, try to confuse them as to which car they're in. And now you're turning left, and now you're turning right. Okay, here. <laughs> and ask them, one out of 10, how comfortable the seat they're in is, so that we can determine once and for all if your cheap stuff is as comfortable as my expensive stuff. <laughs> I'm like secure, comfortable. I feel pretty secure. I still got like enough space around here, mm -hmm. which is nice. Dude, this is like a solid nine. Like, nine, seven, 8.5. 8.5. I mean, I have no, I, that's great. Maybe it's low car, maybe it's high car, who knows? Oh. <laughs> Assume the driving position. Oh man. Oh, this is the bridge. What? This is the bridge for sure. Are you sure about that? It feels a little bit more luxurious. Very luxurious. Very luxurious. Straight up, feels this comfy. one is more comfortable, but yeah. the other one feels more secure. This one definitely feels less secure. Hmm. It just touches, like the way it might- Caresses it, your back? My ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. 8.5. 7.8. Uh, one more question, what car are you in? Low car, for sure. Low car? Ooh, how about you take off that blindfold? and be revealed that you are in the car. <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty close. I think a lot of the scores were close, but uh, in total, <laughs> iCar takes the win. All right, Jerry, first impressions in the race quip seats. How are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. The belts aren't, they're not as nice. Like, they just, no. These belts, while they're, you know, they're good, they got you held in, but they're so thick. Yeah. Just kind of encroaches on the old neck. Okay, James, go down. <gasps> Yeah, you're flopping. Yeah, I'm flopping around. You're not like smacking shit. your head in my shoulder like last time <laughs> with the stock seats. Vastly superior to the stock seats. Yeah, way more huge supportive. improvement. All right, what do you think? First impressions? I like these harnesses way better. Yeah, way thinner. Way thinner, way comfier. My shoulders are so locked in right here. <laughs> oh, these oh. are nice. You're locked in, Jer. Yeah. You can't sling my head against the wall. No. That's great. Hell yeah. That's awesome. These are a lot more supportive than the race quips. I totally agree. These just fit me better. These are better seats. So, does more expensive mean more better? I'd say yeah. Safety, we're gonna go ahead and say tie. You're both FIA approved. Yep. If you're buying a race seat, get one that's FIA approved. 
Uh, you know, the weight savings on the race quip seats is pretty uh, negligible. It's only a couple pounds. Comfort, these are more comfortable yeah? than the race quips, I think. Yeah, but I could also see, like, on a road trip, ultimately thinking that the race quips are a little comfier, just having a little bit more room to yeah. move. I'd say stability, these offer a little bit more support than the race quips. I totally agree. That's not to say that the cheaper stuff is bad or not worth buying if that's your budget or your taste. Right. But this stuff makes me feel awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video and everything else on Donut. Hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss anything. We put out new videos all the time. Next week, we're putting brand new big brake kits on our cars, and we're going to be taking them out to the track, so we'll get to feel how those brakes feel and how these seats feel. Yeah. That's next week. Go work on a car and make a video with your friends. Yeah, do it. It's fun, and it's kind of easy. And sometimes it's hard. <laughs>